Alright guys, BLM here, back with a new video. In this video, I'm going to be doing another recasting video here. Now, I have done this in the past for Survivor Game Changers, Survivor Karamoan, I've done it for Micronesia. With like Survivor Game Changers and Karamoan being two of the most controversial all-star castings in the history of the show. But something I hadn't thought about doing before now is doing a similar type of video for some of the all-star cast that aren't as controversial as some of these other ones. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the cast of Survivor Winners at War and talking about who I personally would have put on the cast if it was solely based on my personal choice. Now, I remember when Survivor 40 was first leaked and I made my video where I reacted to the cast and a lot of people reacted negatively to my reactions in the sense that I was kind of let down that certain winners weren't there. So in this video here, I guess I could talk about who I personally would have cast. So let's do it now normally with these recasting videos i end up going through the cast one by one and talking about if they would have stayed on the cast or if they would have left who i would have replaced them with with this video though because the casting pool is so small it's just all the winners obviously i think it's small enough to the point where it's actually much easier to just run through the winners one by one and normally i would go in chronological order however i think with this video actually it's actually a lot more interesting to go in reverse chronological order so let's do it that way. We're going to start off with Tommy. And Tommy obviously wasn't on Winners at War, and he doesn't need to be on Winners at War. He's not on my cast. I, I don't feel like he's someone that I need to see play again. While I very much respect his game, I think he's a very underrated winner in the grand scheme of Survivor. I don't feel like he is an interesting enough TV character to where I need to see him back. And especially for his all-winner season, especially with the male field here, where there are so many male winners to pick from. It's like Tommy simply doesn't make the cut. Next up, we got Chris Underwood, and Chris Underwood is someone I've gone on record in saying I would like to see Chris Underwood play again. I think seeing him win Edge of Extinction was obviously a very weird way to win Survivor, and I think to see him back would really just prove how good of a player he really is. However, I don't think Winners at War is the place for him. Uh, again, like to have this person that was voted out third came back to the game and then winning the game, to have him on Winners at War, this 20th anniversary massive all-winner season, I do think that's a bit of a letdown. So again, he wasn't on the actual cast, and he wouldn't have made my dream cast either. Next up, we got Nick Wilson, and Nick Wilson was on Winners at War. However, on my dream cast, he's not on there. Not that I didn't like Nick. I mean, like, I was very happy that Nick was on Winners at War in the sense that I think he had stuff to prove from his first time. And I had very high hopes for Nick coming into Winners at War. However, in terms of this dream cast, I don't think he's really necessary. Again, I think he's one of these players that I think he would have had more opportunities to come back in later seasons. And with him being a very, very recent winner, I think he came into this season with this stigma of being like the newbie, this new kid on the block. And I think that also harmed him in a way. I think it would have just been better off if he just wasn't on the cast, especially because there were so many other male winners that I would have rather have seen back. Next up, we got Wendell, and I actually didn't put Wendell on the cast either. Again, obviously, he was on Winners at War, and I think Wendell is probably, for me, the male that I end up cutting from the cast that I would actually like to see the most on the cast, at least preseason. Wendell's another one that I had very high hopes for coming into Winners at War. I was really considering him as a winner pick coming into the season. However, in terms of casting here, again, like as I said with Nick, like, I think Wendell would have had so many opportunities to come back in future seasons i feel like for him to come back for winners at war and for me there were just much better options i mean i do think it was cool to see him and jeremy play together especially considering wendell talked about how like jeremy was his idol and everything and to see that was pretty cool but again to have him on the all winner season for me it wasn't an absolute necessity as there were just other people i would have rather see play again next up we got ben and ben was the easiest one for me He's cut. <laughs> Didn't need him on the cast. Not that I dislike Ben. I, I know a lot of people like really hate Ben. I actually think Ben's a really fun character, and I, I wouldn't have mind seeing him return down the road. But again, for winners at war, I just feel like there are better options. People who probably won't come back under any other circumstance. I feel like Ben was like such a lock for the next all-star season that he's someone that I didn't need on my cast. Plus also, I feel like, again, to have him on the cast, a winner that got so extremely lucky towards that end game on Winners War. Again, it's kind of similar to like a Chris Underwood where like, again, for me, didn't need him on. Next up, we got Sarah. And Sarah is the first person that was on the Winners at War cast that also made my cast here. Now, I think Sarah, I mean, first off, we got to mention the lack of female winners. There's simply just not that many. So because of that, you're going to see a lot of the same female winners from 
the actual winners of war still being on the cast here. But even then, I think Sarah was a pretty solid pick. I mean, while she's not the most fascinating TV character in the world, I think she's a very, very strong player. I think seeing what she did on Game Changers and also adding in the fact that she could play again with Tony, that would be really fun. And we did see that on the actual season itself. So I think missing out on all those things would have been a disservice to the season. I do think Sarah should have been on the cast from the get-go. Next up, we got Adam. And Adam, I actually did not put on my cast. Mainly because I feel like there's a very easy replacement for him. And that's someone that I would really like to see more. And again, someone that I don't feel like is as likely to return as Adam in any other circumstance. Again, Adam's another one. Like Ben, like Wendell, I I think could have easily come back in a future season. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. That being said, like obviously Adam was fantastic on Winners of War. I mean, Adam was one of the bright spots of Winners of War. I think he was such a fantastic character on this season. And I still think, like, to me, Adam is someone that I wouldn't mind on almost every season of Survivor. To have someone play this hard every single time he plays, willing to make himself look like a fool at every opportunity. Like, uh, Adam's the perfect type of player for Survivor. But again, I'm basing this off of my opinions preseason, how I was feeling before Winners at War aired. And at that point, again, Adam was not someone that I needed to see back on my TV screen. Next up, we have Michelle. And Michelle was someone obviously on Winners at War. And she did make my cast as well. Again, there aren't many female winners that weren't on Winners at War. So I did have some debate with Michelle. Because like Michelle was someone very similar to Chris Underwood or a Ben, where it's like, I would like to see them return to really prove themselves as a player because their reputations before this season were that they got very lucky in the way they won. I mean, obviously, Michelle had the controversial win against Aubrey, and she also had the Joe Medivac, which greatly benefited her game and still had the win immunity at that point. Again, like I feel like Michelle is an extremely lucky winner, but I still wanted to see her return at some point. It's just a question is like, does it need to be winners at war? Probably not. I think in an ideal world, we would have had more women winners to where someone could have replaced Michelle. But with the current batch of female winners that we have, I feel like Michelle is a better option than for other female winners. So because that Michelle does still land on the cast here. But again, she's someone that in an ideal world for me personally, probably would have been replaced and probably would have been given another shot on a more general all-star season. Next up, we got Jeremy and Jeremy locked. Uh, I think Jeremy's easy. I mean, he's the winner of Second Chance, a very popular and very strategically aggressive season of the show. I think he's a very popular person within the Survivor community. I, I mean, like, who doesn't like Jeremy? Plus, also, I think he's a fun character, and I think he's someone that is a very savvy player. So, I mean, for me, Jeremy easily made the cut here. No real debate there. Next up, we got Mike Holloway. Mike Holloway is the first winner that didn't make the winners at Warcast. That I did put on my cast. Now, I think this is an easy replacement, too. I think you just straight up replace him for Ben. I I think it's easy. For me, Mike, I I think the thing about Mike is I think he's a great character. I think he's a solid player. Probably a better player than his actual winning game allowed him to demonstrate. I mean, obviously, he makes some missteps earlier on in the merge that cause him to have to win immunity after immunity after immunity and also use an idol and and through that is able to get to the end where he does win he essentially wins out from the final what nine so i mean that's ridiculous but i kind of have a similar opinion to him that i have of adam now where I, again i said adam i wouldn't mind seeing him on every season because like he's always going to play hard he's going to try everything he can within his power in order to make a move that benefits him within the game i think mike is the exact same way And I do think if Mike had returned on this season, I feel like he could have proved himself as a player. So again, Mike made my cut here, easily replacing Ben. Next up, we got Natalie Anderson. And Natalie is an easy one. Again, I've been wanting her to come back for a while up to this point. And for her to be back for Winners of War, pretty easy there. Again, very, very strong winning game, especially in the back half of her game. Really fun character. Again, makes very bold moves. I mean, the fact that she pulls off that Baylor blindside is insane. She blindsides John Mish. She saves John Mish at the final nine. She blindsides Alec, which in turn blindsides John Mish. Like, I mean, again, like I think Natalie makes a lot of bold moves. Really fun player. Really was excited to see her return where she did kind of let me down a bit. But still, I mean, like coming into the season, I think Natalie was a pretty big lock for me as she was one of my favorite winners at that point in Survivor history. Next up, we got Tony. I mean, Tony's lock. Come on. Tony's my favorite player in Survivor history. I've talked about this before. No question, Tony needs to be back. Playing extremely dominant and really fun game in Survivor Kageon. And then just went out real quick in Game Changers. But again, see him return here, 
really fun. Was super excited. And obviously, he ends up winning the season. So, Tony, easy pick there. Next up, we got Tyson. And Tyson's another one. Easy pick. I think he makes the cut. Played a pretty dominant game in his season, but is also, again, another really fun character. Probably more fun of a character than he is an actual proven great player. I mean, while he did play great in Blood vs. Water, I mean, obviously, Heroes vs. Villains, he makes that massive mistake, even though he's playing well up until that point. Token Sheen's pretty flawed game, and we also see him in Winners at War also not play particularly great. But I do think Tyson is one of these people that truly understands the game. I think he gets the strategic elements of the game. It's more so about executing them. And coming into the season, he was another one that I had really high hopes for. Tyson can technically come back on any season. I think Tyson would come back on any season he was asked. But for Winners at War here, I think having someone like him, this really funny, snarky guy, that's also a really strong player. I think we need to have Tyson on this season. Next up, we got Cochran, and Cochran was not on Winners at War, and he did not make my dream cast either. He was in consideration. However, again, like I think he kind of fits within that Adam archetype and also another person that I did replace Adam with. So it's like, I just feel like the other person's a better option than Cochran. Plus, also, I just feel like Cochran would go home super early. I just feel like Cochran would have been like one of the first few boots almost guaranteed on this season. I don't see how he makes it through the first few rounds. So again, for me, Cochran doesn't make the cut. Next up, we got Denise. And this might be a controversial opinion. I actually cut Denise from the cast. And Denise is one of the few female winners that I end up switching out. And again, for me, I, I've just never been that big of a Denise fan. Like I know some people really, really love Denise's game. I've never been a big proponent of it. I mean, I think it's a mid-tier winning game. Like it's not a terrible winning game, but I think some people really overblow it and to see it on a return, like it's just not a high priority for me. Like I, I wasn't upset that Denise was cast. Like I, I think Denise is a perfectly fine cast on Winners at War. However, I just feel like there were other female options that I personally would have liked to see back than Denise. Again, like Denise being on the cast, it's fine. I think she's a savvy enough player. She obviously ends up leading to one of the biggest moments of the season where she blindsides Sandra. And I have nothing actively against Denise. It's just that I feel like there were probably better options there for me personally. But for Winners at War, she just wasn't a necessity for me to have on my cast. Next up, we got Kim Spradlin. And again, come on. Lock. I, I still think Kim Spradlin's the best winner in Survivor history. I think she's one of the best players in Survivor history. I think if I made my top 10 player list before Winners at War, I think there's a serious argument for Kim being number one. So for me, Winners at War, I think, yeah, they have Kim back. One of the best winners, someone that could solidify their position as one of the top players of all time. I think Kim had to be there. Next up, we got Sophie. And Sophie, for me, again, kind of had to be there. Not, not like an absolute necessity, but someone I definitely wanted to see on Winners at War. Again, she's another one that I've been wanting to see back for a little while now. I was disappointed she didn't make the cut for Game Changers. But here for Winners at War, I mean, I think Sophie is a decent pick here. Someone that has a story about wanting to prove herself, obviously. And I do think she did. I think she proved herself as a strategic force within the game. But also, I feel like Sophie's another one of these people that just understands the strategic game. I think her, Tyson, probably the next person that we talk about, I think are three of the best strategic thinkers in the history of Survivor. And because of that also, I, I would have liked to see Sophie back here. And the next person, again, absolute lock here. We have Boston Rob. Again, as I said with Sophie, again, one of the best strategic thinkers in the history of the game. And I do think seeing him return for winners at war, I, I think it's a necessity. I, I think Boston Rob is one of the biggest names in the history of Survivor. To not see him on winners at war would have been a massive letdown in my eyes. And to be honest, I still think it's one of the main reasons we had winners at war. I think if Boston Rob turned it down, I don't know if we have winners at war. Especially if like Boston Rob, if Parvati, if Sandra had turned it down. Again, like I don't think we have this season, but we do. And Again, Boston Rob for me had to be on the cast. It was really a no-brainer. Next up, we're getting to a string of people that weren't on the actual Winners at War. And none of them made my cast either, but we'll still run through them. First up, we got Fabio. I, I wouldn't mind a Fabio return. I just feel like Winners at War is not the spot for it. Again, I think he's not one of these people like a Michelle, like a Ben, like a Chris Underwood that would be much better on just a general all-star season. Fabio for me played a very unimpressive winning game and have him be on Winners at War would just be kind of a letdown for me personally. Next up, we got Natalie White, and I'm fine never seeing Natalie White play again. For me, with the women winners, I mean, she was the only one that I didn't even consider at all of putting on the cast. Like, I, I just have no interest in seeing her play again. Let's move on. Next up, we got JT, and JT was a consideration. I think for me, the problem with JT is just that there's too many male winners. For me, it was between JT and Mike Holloway. I went with Mike Holloway. I think Mike Holloway has 
more potential to show in the season. However, I wouldn't mind a JT return either. I think after Game Changers, something that really solidified for me with JT is that JT is another one of these people like Adam and like how I perceive Mike Holloway is that they're always going to play hard. They're always going to try every little thing that they can. And yes, it'll blow up in their face half the time, but at least it'll be fun TV. I wouldn't mind JT really on any general all-star season at this point. But again, when we're at Winners at War, well, he certainly has the level of legacy that I would want for someone that be on Winners at War. I feel like we've seen him enough to the point where I just want to give Mike Holloway a chance. So I decided to give Mike the spot in the cast, though. Again, if JT had been on Winners at War, I wouldn't have been upset either. Next up, we got Bob. <laughs> Come on. I don't need to see Bob play again. I'm good. Let's move on. Got Parvati. Um, Parvati, come on. Locke. Had to have win- her on Winners of War. I mean, I don't think you can have Winners of War again without her and Boston Rob and Sandra. They were absolute locks, absolute necessities. She made it on pretty easy. Next up, we got Todd. And Todd is another one of these winners that made my cut, that didn't make the original cut. Again, I, for me, I think he's an easy replacement for Adam. Again, for me, as I said, it was between him and Cochran. I went with Todd. I just feel like Todd is someone that I would really, really love to see play Survivor again. I think at this point, it's pretty clear that's probably never happening. But he's another one that like played really hard in his season, played a very strategic game on his season, played a very dominant game on his season. I think to see him back from Winners at War would have been really fun to see how he adapted to the game, but it was all for naught. But still, I would love to see Todd back. He made my cut here. And next up, we got another winner. I would really like to see back. We got Earl. I think Earl is, again, not one of the more dominant winners in the history of the show. I think seeing him return to the game, I mean, at this point, what, like 13 years after his original season, plus also adding in that he's returning to like Fiji and he declared himself the king of Fiji. I think all that would have been really fun. And yes, I know Earl had kid right when filming was about to start and that's why he wasn't on the cast. I get that. But again, this is my dream cast. So in a dream scenario, Earl would be on the cast. I know he couldn't do it, but... It would have been really cool if he was on the actual cast itself. Next up, we got Yule. I think Yule's a lock. Again, for me, Yule had to be there. Someone that I never thought we would ever see play Survivor again. And the fact that we got Yule back for Survivor 40 is really, really insane. And to this day, I still think easy pick here. Absolute lock. Next up, we got Aris. I didn't need him back. And he didn't make my cut. I mean, I think Aris is someone that was fine on blood versus water like i don't think he's a bad survivor character or player or anything like i wouldn't mind him back on a general all-star season winners at war though i just feel like there's so many better options plus also and he just seems not into it like i, I don't know I, like from what i gather from Aris, i don't think he wants to play again he's talking about how he would play again if they gave him a big paycheck but it's again why are you giving a big paycheck to Aris of all people it's like I don't think he's someone that's likely to play Survivor again. And to be honest, I'm completely fine with him never playing Survivor again. Next up, we got Danny. And again, this is my opinion preseason. Danny made the cuts, though. Again, for me, Danny was someone I was very excited to see back on Winners at War. While I didn't have the highest hopes for her, I think the fact that we finally got someone back from Guatemala was something that's amazing in its own right. But also the fact that I think Danny was someone that was... I don't know if underrated, more so like underappreciated. And she was someone I was definitely excited to see back for Winners at War. Again, obviously she didn't perform well on the season and was really a non-factor on the season. So in an ideal world, obviously like maybe we would switch her out. And someone obviously like Denise did have more of a factor on the season than Danny, despite me cutting Denise and keeping Danny on. But again, this is based on my preseason thoughts, who I would have won on the cast preseason Danny is still definitely up there. Now we got Tom, and I think Prime Tom, like Tom back from Palau, or even him in Heroes vs. Villains, I would like to see back again. However, modern day Tom, I don't know if we need it. Supposedly Tom is a bit out of shape at this point, and is having like lung issues and stuff, and like just overall, I don't know if we need to see Tom play again in that state, because I just feel like he's prime picking to be just taken off very early. But again, this was Prime Tom when Tom was fully healthy and everything obviously tom would be a really great fit for this cast don't know exactly who i would take out though it might be someone that we'll talk about a little bit later next up we got chris doherty and i would have loved to put chris doherty on my cast but i just couldn't i mean there's just not enough space again i just don't know who you replace for chris doherty as i said with tom like again like even with tom it would have been difficult to find a spot for him but with chris doherty i feel like it's even tougher i think he's someone i definitely would would have loved to see play again i think he played a 
fantastic game in Vanuatu and I think seeing him return and be able to either like fully solidify his legacy or probably harm it I, I think it would be really interesting to see however I think Chris suffers from the same thing that I think about Tom where like I just don't know how well Chris is health wise at this point to be able to play again and I just don't know if we'll get the same Chris like would we just get a lessened version of Chris would he just be someone that would be easy to take out very early on due to physical weakness I don't know. I just decided to leave him off because of that. Next up, we got Amber. And Amber is the last person that did make the Winners at War cast that I am personally cutting here. I did not need to see Amber play again. I know a lot of people were excited when we said, oh, Rob and Amber are back. And as insane as that is, I mean, again, insane that they were able to get Rob and Amber to come back to Survivor. I just didn't need to see Amber back. Again, I rightly projected that Amber would have been a very early boot. Really had no faith in her ability within the game, and again, pretty much was right. For me, Amber, very easy cut for me, especially when there's another winner that we'll talk about a little bit later that I felt like was a better fit for this Winners at War cast. Next up, we got Sandra, and obviously Sandra makes it on. Again, like I, I've talked about Sandra's game. I'm not a big fan of Sandra in terms of a game player. I think both her wins are very, very flawed, especially her heroes versus villains win. As a general player, I just don't feel like she is one of the all-time greats, despite her record. However, as a character, she's fantastic, and her legacy is obviously fantastic. I mean, at this point, obviously, she's the only two-time winner. you got to have the two-time winner on Winners at War. I mean, it would be just really insane for you not to put Sandra on this cast, especially when she's one of the biggest names in the franchise. Again, again her, Rob, Parvati, you can't have Winners at War without them. You have to have Sandra on here. Next up, we got Jenna, and Jenna is someone I considered, but I didn't put her on my cast. And while Jenna is someone that I think has some potential within the game, I, I think she hasn't been able to fully demonstrate her understanding of the game of Survivor through her two seasons so far, especially because she had to leave All-Stars so early. For me, again, this is another situation kind of similar to Chris and Tom, but not from a physical standpoint, but more from a mental standpoint, where I just don't know if Jenna is in it right now. Like, I know not too long ago she got in trouble with the DUI, and I just have a feeling that it's like, maybe now's not the right time for Jenna. Again, sometime down the road, possibly, but I just feel like at the time that Winners at War was filming, it probably wasn't the right time. I just feel like she didn't need to be on the cast at that point. Next up, we got Brian Heideck, and I did not put Brian on my cast. Well, I think this like concept of Brian Heideck playing again is an interesting prospect, I don't feel like in execution it would really bring much at all. Again, I think it's a similar thing to like a Cochrane, where it's like, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing him play again, but it's like he's just going to be taken out very early. Like, I, I don't have any faith in Brian Heideck as a player on a return. Like, for me, Brian is very early first couple boots if he's on this season. Plus, also, I, I just feel like Brian Heideck's a very sketchy human being. Uh, he just feels very, like, sleazy to me, and, like, I, I don't need him back on TV. Next up, we got Vesepia, and I've, I've been pretty mixed overall on Vesepia on this channel. I've talked about some positives about her, some negatives, but usually when it comes to casting videos, I usually end up not casting her, just due to the fact that I don't think she's the most interesting TV. However, I did put her on the cast here, and this mostly for me came from one to add diversity. But also, I just want to have more old school winners on the show. And I think Vesepi obviously having not played since season four, I think to see her back on Winners at War would have been really interesting. I mean, she would have had the biggest layoff out of the entire cast. I think that would be an interesting prospect. I think she's someone that still has potential to do well on the season if she were to return at this point. Plus, I just feel like she has a very different outlook on the game than a lot of the other winners that were on the cast. So I feel like in terms of like diversifying, not even just like race, but also philosophies on the game, I feel like a Vesepia return wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world. Next up we got Ethan, and Ethan was the oldest winner to actually be on Winners of War, and he still made my cut here. Again, as I said earlier, like if Tom was in his prime, I probably would have cut Ethan for Tom, and there would have been some debate with Chris as well, but I feel like for Ethan, at this point in Survivor history, I, I think you got to put him on. I think it's a really interesting story of like him obviously surviving cancer and now being back on Survivor. I think he's also one of the older school winners. That's cool. He's also the first like hero winner of the show. That's also a really fun aspect of it. I, I think Ethan being back on this season was, again, a mind-blowing thing that even happened. Again, I, it was him and Amber that were the two massive surprises once we actually saw the cast itself. 
And while I was like, again, kind of whatever on Amber returning, I, I was excited for Ethan to return here. So I do think he still makes my cut. Next up, we got Tina and Tina also made my cut. And spoiler, the final two winners here that we're going to be talking about both made my cut. As there were the two winners that I was disappointed weren't on the actual winners at Warcast, even at the time that the cast was originally leaked. I just feel like Tina is, it's mind blowing that she's not in this cast. Again, for me, I would have rather had her over, definitely over Amber and even over Denise. Like I feel like Tina is, first off, she's the first female winner of the show. I think that's something you have to factor in. I think she's also someone that's very willing to play again. She's always talked about wanting to play in an all winner season. She also came back not too, too long ago in Blood vs. Water. And also in that season, she was a pretty fun figure within that season as well. Like for me, I, I feel like Tina's just such a legendary figure within the show that I personally would have put her on Winners at War without question. And I do find it kind of underwhelming that she wasn't on the cast, though. Considering at this point she's much older than pretty much anyone that is on the actual cast itself, maybe that played a factor in there. But still, I feel like Tina had to make the cast for me personally. And last up, I mean, we have Rich Hatch. I mean, Rich obviously makes the cut. I mean, obviously there's the stuff with Sue that is not a great situation that's really terrible. And really, obviously, that's the main reason why he's not on the cast in real life. But... Again, it's Winners at War. It's like to not have the original winner on Winners at War, especially when the original winner is such an iconic figure and actually wants to play again. I mean, I just don't think you could do a true Winners at War without Richard Hatch. Now, obviously, they did it. So, I mean, whatever. And also, like, I understand the situation. Obviously, the dance stuff had just happened. And to bring Richard Hatch back immediately after that is not a good look. But I think just in concept of a Winners at War season, especially at the time the season leaked where we didn't know about the Dan situation, I think, come on, you got to have Richard Hatch on the cast. It was completely mind-blowing that he wasn't. But there we go. That is essentially my dream cast for Survivor Winners at War as of right before Winners at War. So on the cast, we got Rich Hatch, we got Tina Wesson, Ethan Zahn, Vesepia Towery, Sandra Diaz-Twine, Danny Boatwright, Yul Kwan, Earl Cole, Todd Herzog, Parvati Shallow, Rob Mariano, Sophie Clark, Kim Spradlin, Tyson Apostle, Tony Velachos, Natalie Anderson, Mike Holloway, Jeremy Collins, Michelle Fitzgerald, and Sarah Lucina. So out of the original cast, 14 of the original cast still land here on the list here. Coming into this, I actually thought the cast would mostly stay the same. And I'm too fair, like most of this video is nitpicking. I mean... The cast is strong. Like, no matter what, Winners at War was an extremely strong cast. I think they did a relatively good job with who they ended up picking for the cast. Obviously, they couldn't get Earl. I, I don't think that Todd and Mike picks are, like, outrageous that they weren't on the cast. Like, I would have preferred them to be on there, but it's not outrageous that they weren't. But Sepia, I get it. And then Rich and Tina are the ones that, like, I feel like they should have been on there. But again, knowing the Dan situation with Rich, I feel like it makes sense. Tina, I, I actually... Don't get Tina, but whatever. I mean, the actual winners at Warcast isn't bad. It's just that I feel like this is my preferred cast had everything gone right in the casting process. But yeah, that's it for Winners at War. Uh, as I said earlier on in the video, like I think I might continue on with this series with other All-Star seasons. Like Initially, this was kind of a thing that I wanted to do for these more unpopular All-Star seasons. But now I kind of realize, like, why not just do it for every general All-Star season? Like, if I can do this for Winners at War, I'm sure I can do this for Heroes vs. Villains, the original All-Stars, even like a Blood vs. Water. I'm sure there's other seasons I can do this for. I've already thought about doing a Cambodia one where I talk about who I personally voted for when it came to the fan vote there. So, I mean, like, really, there's a lot more I can do with this recasting video series that I might continue on down the road. But for now, that's the video. Thank you for watching.